To all Reddit travelers, what is your creepiest hotel story? I was staying in Birmingham, AL, at a Hyatt. Nothing crazy. Nothing obviously creepy. One night around 2 a.m., I woke up to a man screaming. Like, stabbed in the heart scream. I sat there in pa a panic, wondering if I should call someone. But when I didn't hear anything else, I chalked it up to a dream. The next night, I woke up around 3 a.m. I had this horrible feeling that someone was in my room. I rolled over and there was an old man sitting on the AC. It was boxed in, smoking, looking away from me. I stared at him for a few seconds and he turned to look at me. So I shot up out of bed, ready to run, and no one was there. I don't lose a dream. While I have vivid dreams, they're not that vivid. I can describe that man to a T, and yet he was never there. My company would put us up in the Shiloh Inn downtown. We were in Salt Lake City. A coworker of mine was awakened in the middle of the night by the sounds of a bunch of kids in the hallway. It went on for longer than he could tolerate, so he opened the room door to tell him a hush, only to find the hallway empty. He could still hear the children, so, figuring they were in the adjoining room, he called down to the front desk to complain. The man at the front desk claimed to be certain there were no kids staying on that floor. But that he was certain the noise would subside in a bit. He offered to send up some earplugs. My coworker was a bit annoyed. How can you say there are no kids here when I'm hearing kids? He went back to bed and eventually fell asleep. The next day when he was checking out, a different clerk made the mistake of asking the routine question, was everything satisfactory with your stay? My coworker gave her an earful about the noisy kids and how the other clerk had dismissed his complaints. The clerk looked a little uncomfortable and said in a half whisper, we're not supposed to talk about our history with guests, but please do a Google search for Rachel David and you'll understand what happened to you. We get similar complaints every few weeks and we try and never put kids on that floor. In the van on the way to the airport, he read his phone, he read on his phone the story of how mother Rachel David tossed seven children at the 11th floor balcony of the hotel, then called the international dunes to their deaths before jumping herself. This was at a hotel in one of the nice, not so nice places in Singapore. Can't remember when I went back to the hotel. At the elevator, there was some other dude waiting there, but he didn't push the button, so I had to. At the time, I thought he was a lazy. Entered left, he didn't push a floor either. Here's playing SS13, he gave me a healthy case paranoia towards the actions of others, but I didn't jump to the conclusion yet. Might be he just was at the same floor as I. Stepped up, the hall split in two. Guy didn't go first and only after I head towards my room. He walked to follow. Warning bells in my head. This may be how I die. Continued on. He still followed me down the windy path and I just took a turn away from my room. He was still following. At which point I acted as if I headed the wrong direction by mistake and rushed to my room. Dude actually yelled behind me as if I did something wrong. Didn't get out until the next morning. That was worrisome. Fourteen years ago, I was visiting Tai Pai with my family. Our room was on the fifth floor of the hotel. It was really the fourth floor, but labeled five because four is unlucky. In the dead of night, I woke up to the sound of knocking, but it wasn't coming from our door. It was coming from the direction of the windows. There were no balconies to a person to stand on, just normal windows which meant that someone knocking on that fifth floor window was impossible. And yet the window knocking persisted. Mind racing, I wondered what inhuman, unnatural entity was there, just on the other side of the window. I was too terrified to move. It's called my strength to whisper my parents who were on the next bed over. Do you hear that? They woke up and I repeated my question, my voice hoarse with dread. I didn't dare look in their direction as their bed was closer to the window and the unholy knocking. My parents laughed. The knocking sound had been my mother farting in her sleep. Posted elsewhere on Reddit before. A year ago, I was in rural Arkansas, the kind of place where everyone knows everyone else. I usually sleep with all lights off and even pull out the wires to the alarm clock to avoid the light. I woke up in the middle of the night and realized the bathroom light was on. Tap was running in the shower too. 
I knew I couldn't have forgotten that. Still, I thought that I might have as I was tired and sleepy. Turned them off, turned off the light, and went back to bed. Woke up after a couple hours and saw the lights were on in the bathroom. Tap was running into us to shower. The tub had clogged and water had started seeping out. Scared shitless, I left the room and walked down to the front desk. A half-asleep middle-aged lady was the manager and her dog was asleep. Both of them came back with me. I explained her the whole thing and showed her the tub. She was flabbergasted. The dog was still not in the room and I was roaming outside. He came into the room without any trigger started barking wildly in the bathroom. The lights went out in the bathroom while the rest of the room was still powered. Both of us sprinted out of the room, but the dog kept barking in the bathroom while she kept shouting, Charlie. Charlie. After 20 seconds of this, both of us decided to go back in for the dog. At this stage, I was almost shitting my pants. Charlie came running out of the bathroom and went to the corner of the room. Sat there drenched in water, sweat, and whimpered. After what seemed like an eternity, the dog walked with us, went back to the front desk and sat there for the remainder of the night. Oh boy, so right out of high school, I went to visit my boyfriend in the military. How my parents let me go, I'll never know. So we get a motel for the week and we proceed to spend the entire time in the room, as two kids who haven't seen each other in months will do. On the fifth or so day, we get back to the motel from dinner and find the room below us is taped off with police tape and surrounded by cop cars. We assume drug dealer prostitution or something and don't think anything else of it. Well, after my week is up, I'm in a cab on the way to the airport and hear something about the sunset in motel on the radio. Turns out Marine killed his wife there, drove to Texas, was killed in a police shootout, and they found her body three days after she was murdered. Two friends and I stayed in a hotel in Sapporo. It was part of a large franchise, all very standard, no funny business. On the first night, I went to bed last. My friends were already asleep. I closed my eyes, just listening to how the breathing of people sleeping gets really loud in a quiet room. There were four sets of breathing, including mine. I counted again and again, four sets, mine, my two friends, and some. Thing, someone else. This repeat every night for the four nights we stayed there. And in my culture, we don't mention the supernatural in case they notice we notice them. So I suffered those nights alone. So now it's in Vancouver and was settling in my bunkmate arrived. She was an older, Aussie woman in her late fifties, early sixties from Melbourne doing some world solo travel. She alluded to being alone now. She asked me at NYC, I'm from there, and answered almost everything that I told her, with a subdued, almost whispery, that's amazing, in accent, that's amazing, in bed later that night. I turn over in bed away from the wall and see her standing from my rail with the moon from the window pouring over her. She's wearing a long white nightgown, her hair is in disarray, almost glowing and she's staring at me. Face is at an angle, so half of it's in shadow, and she whispers, that's amazing, and then goes back to sleep. Not me, my father-in-law. He's part of a large Baptist choir that travels around singing in various countries or special events and has been to a few interesting places. A few years ago, they received permission to perform in North Korea, and were warned by the DoD their rooms will most likely be bugged. Not to worry, it's a bunch of retired gentlemen who are traveling around singing about God and everyone sharing a room with at least one other person. Not a lot of easen, reason to e eavesdrop, so they make jokes and keep moving. The day of their performance, one of the guys is digging around his suitcase and finally asks his roommate if he has an iron because he'd forgotten to bring one and his suit was wrinkled. He didn't. A few minutes later, there's a knock at the door and it's a bellboy with an iron. Me and the fiancé once stayed the night in the Grand Hotel in Torquay. For those not in the know, Grand Hotels in the UK are marvelous old Victorian buildings which sadly, particularly in old seaside towns, tend to have seen better days. Well anyway, we were having a ball getting money drunk amongst the old folks who still love to spend their weeks in such places, particularly in the very attractive Art Deco bar. Everything was super until we tried to sleep that night. 
My fiance was first, claiming that a little boy came in her room and started tugging on her hand. And I later that same night woke screaming, convinced the woman had burst into the room as Dave undressed, screaming for help. Let's just say we left in a hurry. And when leaving, I asked, has anyone ever said this hotel is haunted? To which the receptionist replied sheepishly, very much in the affirmative, 10 out of 10 would go again. A little hotel in London. I remember being a couple of blocks away from King's Cross. We got there late and there was only a reception guy. He told us about breakfast and internet services. You can come back upstairs around 8 and the guy in charge of the internet cafe will be back. The cook starts serving breakfast at 6. The cleaning crew usually starts cleaning rooms at 10. Things like that. The creepy part, he was the only employee there. He was the cook and the cleaning guy and the one in charge of the computers, but he has different personalities for each and spoke of the others in third person. We only stayed there for a couple nights and we were never really sure if he was crazy or just being funny. Finally, something I can answer. I traveled to Liverpool a few years ago with an XGF. We stayed in the Adelphi Hotel for two nights. I found out a booking website for cheap and I'm a massive history geek, so I thought it'd be perfect. For those unfamiliar with the building, it been in continuous use from the 19th century. It has these really old-fashioned rooms with high ceilings and generally Victorian furnishings. I thought it was great if room was a bit creepy. There was a massive mirror right across the bed. Just so, there was nothing out of the ordinary, so we went out to explore the town. When we came back at night, we were too tired to even take a shower, as we normally do. We fell right into bed. Some Something to be conscious of before we begin, but the actual creepy part is the room was an end suite with a tiny foyer in between the bedroom and the bathroom where the front door of the hotel room was also located along with a storage closet. I always like to lock things before I go to sleep. It's kind of a habit of mine. So I locked both the front door as well as the chain lock on the door leading to the bathroom. So far, everything was normal and we drifted off to sleep. Or so I thought. Less than 15 minutes after I closed my eyes, but not yet fallen asleep, I experienced the most intense terror of my life. I'm not talking normal terror. This was the most afraid I've ever been in my life. Like I was consciously aware that some, that someone was watching me and didn't want me to know it. There was a feeling of dread in the air, like something wasn't right. I jumped out of bed and turned the light on. Nothing, but the door was wide open. I woke up my ex and asked her if she had gotten up to use the toilet since we'd gone to bed. She said no, so I asked her again. More intensity. No, she was certain that neither of us had gotten up in the 15 minutes since we turned off the lights. I told her okay and asked her if she felt weird at all. She said no, she was very tired and she wanted to sleep. However, I was too terrified to fall asleep. So I turned on all the lights in the room and locked the door again. Trying everything to take my mind off what was seemingly just an empty room. Every now and then, glancing nervously up from my laptop to see if anything was still there. Hours later, I was too tired to stay up anymore and I fell asleep without realizing. But when I woke in the morning, the door was once again open. Once again, my ex denied either of us using the toilet in the night. The same sequence of events was repeated the next night as well. After the first night began, I suspect something was not normal. However, I refrained from googling Adelphi Hotel and haunted until I was on the train out of the city. Apparently, the Adelphi is the most haunted hotel in Britain. I don't know if I believe in ghosts, but I was really frightened that night. I'll never forget it. Even now. I'm sat at home in my well-lit flat in the middle of the day and I'm getting scared writing this. My wife and I are moving from Boston to California. We need to find pet-friendly hotels along the way because we had our cat, Cleo, with us. One of these stops was in Albuquerque, NM. The night we get into Albuquerque, we check in, get settled, everything's fine dandy. I also took a shower the night and didn't notice anything wrong with the bathroom. Other than the shower being old and needed some updating. The next morning, we're getting ready to head out. I go to the bathroom. I notice in the back of the bathroom door. 
written in what looked like dried bar soap. Cleo. This was definitely not there the night before. I would have seen it before and after I took my shower. Call my wife in the bathroom to check it out and she didn't see it the night before either. We then made sure Cleo was okay, scooped her up, put her in a crate, and packed it as quick as we could. We did not want to investigate. We did not want to hang around. We checked the, out of the hotel and got the, out at Albuquerque. By the way, other than that hotel room, Albuquerque's lovely. My wife and I are driving cross country to a family vacation. It was getting late, we were tired of driving and needed a place to stop. Most hotels were already full for the night. We found a motel vacancy and booked a room. It was a typical rundown motel right off the highway in Indiana. We got to our floor with about only half of the hallway lights worked. We passed the room with red tape on the door. As a good husband, I could sense my wife's uneasiness so as to be as supportive as I could. I joked to her that I bet someone died in that room. She didn't appreciate the joke. We were both tired and had to our room about three doors down. When we got to our room, the wife went to use the bathroom to find some irritating shit and just left it in the toilet. No paper. No flush. The entire room gave off a like, you're gonna get a disease or leave a bugs vibe. So we slept with our clothes and shoes on and made the best of it. The next morning during checkout, we made the same joke to the front desk clerk. What happened in the room down the hall from us? Someone die? The clerk didn't hesitate to reply that yes, someone had died. They fell asleep with a cigarette in bed and burnt to death in the room. My wife and I just said, oh. At the same time, as we soaked in the poor taste, my joke as it became a reality and turned and left. I searched online to confirm the story, and sure enough, it was true. This motel didn't have a fire alarm system that reported to the fire department. So when the room caught fire, the occupant died of smoke inhalation before someone was alerted to the fire. We haven't stayed in an Indiana motel since. 